<clears throat> as you can see, I'm surrounded by a lot of different cameras <clears throat> at the moment. And as it's the end of the boating season, I need a winter project to keep me occupied. And one of my first loves is photography. That's why I make the YouTube channel, really, because it's an exercise in photography. And I'll tell you a little bit of my background, because when I was 21 years old, my parents bought me a Mamiya 500 camera and um, for my birthday. And um, this was because I'd been using my father's Minolta SRT 101 and taking pictures on his camera and using up his film for free, I suppose. So I thought they, I think they thought they'd kill two birds with one stone, get me off their camera and onto my own. And so this started a very great journey for me. And in the 1960s and 70s, there was a great resurgence of interest, if you like, in photography made so by the introduction of the single lens reflex camera. <clears throat> now, the model for all of them, really, was this camera here, which is the Practica 4, which is the first people's camera, if you like, that built at a reasonable price, with a, um, a solid housing where the prism didn't come off the top. Before that, the prism was removable and the removable prism made its way or kept its way into system cameras where you wanted more flexibility where professionals wanted to be able to look down at the camera as well as through the eyepiece which is quite good for portraiture and so the system cameras had both they had the the eye level finder a replaceable finder and the ordinary cameras just went through looking through the lens. So the idea was that the novelty of the camera was that you look through the lens and even though you, you, you were only just looking down onto a ground glass screen, it seemed like you were looking through the lens. And so this camera is, if you like, the pinnacle of that uh, development of this. We start in the 19. 50s, this camera is from 1960 and um, it's a Practica 4F and probably one of the finest cameras ever made. It is solid, it is beautifully designed, it's a work of art, it's almost got that kind of Art Deco look, um, Art Nouveau uh, look if you like and um, very very fine um, object really and still going after all these years, which is remarkable. <clears throat> now, when I started this journey, I didn't know that I was going to do this uh, documentary, really, when I acquired this camera, because I just somehow was interested in these older German cameras. I have one in Germany, and I wanted to see one again, and so I got this thing on eBay, and the wonderful thing about eBay is, you can pick up this sort of stuff for next to nothing. And uh, it's such fine quality articles. They were the first personal objects that people used to carry before mobile phones and um, this sort of thing came in. They were, you know, well, I said you know, you know all about it. And so, without much ado, what I'm going to do is, oh, I need to tell you, this here is a Miranda. Now, how I got to get to the bottom of Miranda is an interesting story in itself, so I'll probably make a video especially about that. But just to tell you now that when I started this process, I wanted to, I wanted to get another camera because it's difficult to film as well as take still photographs. And still photographs is why I'm making a document, a still photography document about all this equipment. And so the movie is part of that. And the movie is being taken on my Sony RX10, 
is it? RX10? Yeah. And this is an excellent camera for all sorts of photography, yet it is more finely tuned to movie making, I feel. And so I'm going to use, see the dog, <laughs> the dog's barking, because although it's 20 odd megapixels, it doesn't take as fine a photograph, really, if you examine the detail, as the Olympus. Okay. Now, I did have an Olympus EP1 at one point, and so I thought, well, let me get another Olympus. And I had a look at what was available, and the cheapest option um, to, to buy an Olympus camera um, that can do everything you need to do. This is the, uh, the Olympus EPL1. Now, you can buy the body only for about £50. £50 is about the bottom of the line. The lenses are removable. And so, what this does is, this can take all of, you see those lenses over there, this can take all of the old lenses that we used to use on the single lens reflex 35mm. But when you put the lens onto here, if it's a 50 millimeter, it becomes a 100 millimeter. So it's good for portraiture and that kind of thing. And the actual lens that came with this camera is so good. Uh, you're going to see photographs from this from time to time in my videos because I'm going to show movie of me talking and showing you stuff. And I'm also going to show you the pictures that can be taken with this equipment. And so. This camera, I say, the camera body is normally goes for about 50, but I bought it with the lens. This is a standard lens, and the standard lens is 14 to 42 millimeters, which makes it 28 to 84 millimeters, which is a wonderful range of, of uh, lens, lenses. And it doesn't matter whether you use it wide or telephone or whatever, it's sharp as it's absolutely a great lens. It's, uh, it, it beats hands down any of these older lenses I feel. And you can judge that for yourself because I use some of the old lenses. But the old lenses have a certain quality to them too. And where they're good enough, what happens is this, this is a very contrasting lens. There's two things about lenses. One is sharpness and the other is contrast. And contrast is how much black and white there is in the image. And so this is a very contrasting lens, and the Carl Zeiss lenses were also regarded as a, as, a, as a nice contrasting lens. But what can happen is, with the older lenses, they can have a little bit of dust and maybe a bit of fungus if you don't really want that in it, but you can have a bit of that in it. And this can reduce the contrast. It doesn't so much change the sharpness of the lens, it's just the contrast. And also, if you point the camera into the light, this can also um, um, make it very, make, ruin the contrast, and that's why you have a super multi-coated lenses and that kind of thing, because they're designed to keep the contrast even when you're pointing into the sun. So there's a few things I'm talking about in here, but I think it's just the basis for a journey into photography, because <clears throat> photography is the most not well, common, I was going to use the word common, but it's the most widely, um, it's the hobby that is most widely pursued by the population. All over the world, photography is the most common hobby that people have. And you can do so much with a phone, and people say, well, phones, there's nothing better than a phone anymore. It's not true. There's things that you can do with a camera. A camera's really designed. To, to do its job. And so I would say that if you're seriously interested in taking your photography up to the next level, you need to get a proper camera. Now, if you want to do movies, it's absolutely vital to have something like the RX-10, which is um, a great movie camera. If you want to shoot HD movie, and um, it's inconvenient to do it on a phone. You can get away with doing documentary type photography and just photographing like arrangements in your house and things like that. You can do all that with the phone. But if you want to do a serious study, if you like, you need a serious piece of equipment. And I would say this is the most serious piece of equipment that I have found to do what I'm doing with at the moment. It's surprising. And this whole camera with the lens and everything was £80. Now, I did pay £150 
for another uh, camera which was a professional camera, um, a 35mm camera with the APS-C sensor, it's a bit technical, but this is what's called a Fujifilm S3 Pro, which was regarded as the great, great, greatest camera ever made. You know, before they went cheap, they cheapened the, the sensor. It had the old CDS sensor, which was so expensive to make. So when they came to the CMOS sensors, they reduced the price. Now this has a CMOS sensor. So I wanted to make sure that I was getting the right camera. I wanted to make sure I got the best CDS cell camera that I could find. And CDS cell, I'm getting confused now. And the best, this was the best, um, this is 12 megapixel, and that was 8 megapixel, and 8 megapixel is enough, that, you know, 8 megapixel is enough. But they had CDSL, and it was regarded as the most advanced one before they changed it up to CMOS. So I got that camera, that has a Nikon lens, and it's a fine camera, but it is so difficult to shoot with it. It has no live view, which means you can't see the picture on the back here. You have to shoot always through the lens. And it's not that sharp, you know. It's not as sharp as the Carl Zeiss Tessa 50mm from the 1950s or 60s. It's not as sharp as that. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. So I decided to carry on with and use this camera. Now this is what's called Micro Four Thirds system. It's too much, okay. So that's enough of that. <clears throat> Just to say, I'm shooting Micro Four Third System Olympus EPL One. It's the best camera that you can find for do this. Do this at the lowest price. I'm very, very happy using it. It does everything that I want to do. It's got no downside to it at all. The only downside to it is that you can't get into the battery compartment to get the card out and the battery out whilst you've got it on the tripod, but you've got the thing bolted to the bottom here. That's the only downside to it. But other than that, I'm getting used to putting it off and on quite quickly now, but it is a nuisance. Okay, and so I'll be talking about this camera, which is the greatest thing that ever came out of Japan. And um, the Japanese invasion, the takeover of Germany by the Allies, the Allied Impex Corporation that stole Miranda, destroyed Miranda, the greatest camera in, ever made in Japan, and the attempt to steal and prevent the East Germans from making their cameras, which is all of the original cameras, these are all East German cameras, there's no real camera industry in West Germany, there wasn't really, there was a film camera industry uh, mainly centered around lenses there was not like a really outstanding camera making industry camera and lens making was centered at Jena. Jena is the big thing and so this whole series and there's going to be a lot of videos it'll probably be about 20 videos by the time I'm finished so if you're not interested in cameras you best find some other sailing channel to watch for a while but I will be back as, um, and be posting any movements I have on the boat. I'll be doing boat videos as well. But this, this is going to be about photography for the winter time, really. And this is going to be an interesting documentary, an in-depth look at the creation, the evolving, and the movement of the camera expertise making from East Germany to, to Russia, to Japan, to West Germany, at the end of the World War II. Okay, thank you for watching.